Hi everyone, Wally Nichols here for the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending January the 15th, 2021. Let's talk about a couple of topics to start now. We've got a couple of full weeks training under our belts. We're back in the game again. Oh, nothing you know as crazy as last week happened this week. <clears throat> and so we can focus here uh, all, all across the nation and, and whatever our endeavors are. I think that the uh, uh, events have been a psychological drag on everyone, according to the conversations I've had with uh, colleagues across the nation. All right, let's get into it. Two topics to start 2021. How do we stack up against the big tech, okay, and the S&P 500? And then um, MMT is becoming a reality because, um, I'll get into the weeds here in a sec, but listening to President-elect Biden's speech last night, these guys are, are getting on board. They're, 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 uh, they're addressing the issues immediately uh, instead of uh, uh, being distracted. So this is going to go down on, on, on minute two, you know, as soon as he finishes his inaugural speech. It looks like they're going to start legislation on this. So let's dive into it and, um, and, <clears throat> and see what, uh, what it's all about. The reason I get into uh, all I had to do was buy Apple or Amazon. How do we how do we stack up? Well, we rode big tech to survive the like the world did. Okay, to survive the pandemic uh, crisis. We're still in the midst of the pandemic crisis, and we're and we may not be out of it yet. But <clears throat> from an economic and from a market trading standpoint, it ran through March the twenty third until September the second, September the third of. of uh, of 2020 and and that's because that's what it took for us to get a grip uh, collectively in the markets as to what was going on at asset guidance group we just like everybody else rode big tech to survive we also at asset guidance group beat big tech following the rotation and we expect that asset guidance group to outperform big tech throughout 2021 so let me address this and the reason it came up is because i was on a conversation with a client and they said look <clears throat> you did great uh, with these other models, but hey, look, man, all I had to do was uh, buy Apple or Amazon, and it turned out just just swell. Uh, and, and, and I said, well, let me take a look at that, and let's see how we really did. Now, of course, past performance is no guarantee of future results, but let's go back and see where we are at now. Fair enough, our core models uh, and whatnot, uh, you know, were, we were heavily dependent in some aspects on Apple, Amazon, Facebook, big tech, big tech, um, for a lot part of the year. So what I did in order was, was take our other models that really came uh, to fruition in late October, uh, November, and towards the end of uh, Q4 2020, because that's when the rotation started. And so let's let's look at where we were at then. So that's why you see in the average AGG top models, the low for 2020 was zero because we started at zero on these models. I just created them in order to uh, uh, to fight our way out uh, of the um, of, uh, after the crash, after the meltdown of March the 23rd. <laughs> then we put these models together to help our clients uh, start protecting wealth from another uh, cataclysm and then grow back. So that's why we see a zero there. Now you see Apple and Amazon, you guys can, can pull those off of almost any, any uh, information on, on the web and see where they're at on that. But the, the, the big point here, the big salient point here is that overall they did well, okay, if you look at that block of time. But the performance since the September highs it's what I'm trying to get you to focus on. And this is where the difference is because, as I will show you in just a minute, the times, they are changing again, all right? Read the, I, I did a, a little blurb in the email weekly email this week, and I'm talking about, you know, the best thing that we can do is, is, is bide our time and, and, and see how these things are, are going to play out because that's what we did last year. But look. Um, yeah, you did well. You did well for three quarters of the year. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put to you. Since September, just owning Apple, just owning Amazon is suboptimal to your portfolio. Just owning Apple since September, you would have lost 6.4 percent. Just owning Amazon, you would have lost 12. <clears throat> if you'd have stuck with us and, and and made the transitions that we've made, you would have made. 18% uh, just since the September highs, okay, and overall for the year, just shy of 
um, over, over, overall. And so uh, the S&P 500, uh, since the September highs, just shy of 6%. So we've got a 3x multiple uh, on that, and this, it's, it's difficult, and it's, it's really not an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, and I apologize, but I, you know, I've got limited time here, and what I'm trying to do is show you guys reasons to tell your friends and family that you need to be on board with us, because we're actually doing great things over here for people in terms of preserving wealth, <clears throat> in terms of outperforming the markets when we get a chance to. Just give us a good market. I'll explain to you why just in a second. This is so important. Let's dive in then to modern monetary theory. What in the world is MMT all about? If you'll go onto my blog, uh, 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 one of my one of my blogs, um, and I'll, I'll send you guys a link. If you go on the online university, it'll take you uh, to the link. All you have to do basically is look for Asset Guidance Group Online University, or click the link in any of my uh, emails that will uh, take you there. Modern monetary theory is upon us and and whether you like it or not it has been upon us since the outbreak of the pandemic okay i'm saying since march the 23rd of 2020 doesn't matter democrat republican trump administration biden administration it's the fed and and the reality the fed had to go in here and set things up so that we could survive and we didn't lose the entire economy a la 1929 in the entire decade of the 30s okay so they did very well but look back look back at the financial crisis you see a nine percent increase in, in monetary uh supply okay so money supply this is the fed all right are they injecting cash you bet then we had a pretty steady now yeah it's a steep up uh, up Upgrade, but this map uh, is kind of crunched up here to fit into the slide. So don't this chart, don't get distracted by that. Here's the thing: S to get past this pandemic, this once in a hundred year event, money supply has increased just to this point by 24 percent. We're going to have another two trillion coming in on phase one probably to build infrastructure and put everybody back to work probably another <laughs> similar package on phase two that rolls out next month and next month folks is only a couple of weeks off where does this money come from the printing it why do they think that they can just print that because their modern monetary theory is coming to light as a viable way out of the problems that we have and they look to Japan as a as an example uh, as to as to how you can do it without crashing the economy. So the issue here is just printing money. The idea is that the federal government is the sole issuer of money, so there's an infinite supply of money. Money is simply created by fiat when Congress authorizes the spending, and Taxes don't pay for the spending. Taxes are not necessary to pay down the national debt. This is the theory. Don't shoot the messenger, folks. I'm just trying to educate you as to this line of thinking because this is the only way out. Otherwise, we're already at 27 trillion. Our GDP is 19 and a half trillion. <clears throat> People, our economists in the old days, on the old school, used to used to freak when they would hit 90 percent of GDP when the debt hit 90 percent of GDP. You're talking about hyperinflation. Well, the pulling out of the of the 2008 2009 financial crisis showed us that they could control that. They were in a deflationary cycle. The deflationary cycle has since for 12 years now maintained itself. We have not had inflation. We are just now starting to see a creep of inflation. Well, look at that increase in the money supply. Is it any wonder now? Here's the thing that we're going to see in my, and this is just Wally speculating, in this coming year with these programs that are putting people back to work, you are going to see an increase in velocity of the money supply, money changing hand, the velocity of it. That has is been what has kept us out of inflation for the last 12 years, in my opinion, is because, is because there's no evidence, and a lot of other analysts' opinion, smarter than me, that, uh, that I read, but look, there's no velocity in the money. That's why it's just stayed a steady 2%, manageable. 
Now we've got this tremendous increase, followed by tremendous more increases. So last year, we pumped what? We pumped uh, two, three trillion uh, into the corporate uh, buckets. <clears throat> now they're talking about doing this into the regular folks' buckets and putting this money in there. So what? People will spend it. By definition, we're talking about the increase in velocity of money. Now, yeah, they're 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 focused on balancing the economy as opposed to balancing debt versus GDP, that type of stuff. How are they going to control then? How are they going to control then the inflation that is bound to come? Because I'm sitting here telling you, it's it's it, it's bound to come because if you're putting this money in there for the express purpose of people to spend it, consumers to spend it. Now you're going to get inflation. The Fed's been wanting to do this. <clears throat> the question is, is it going to be a dam breaking, and is it all going to come at once? Okay? If you subscribe to the old school economic theory, then you've got to pay down the deficit because you've done all this spending. So how do you do that? Taxes got to go up. If you're a proponent or if you understand modern monetary theory, what has to happen, even if this isn't a long-term replacement for the conventional, old-school uh, economic theory, if you're going, the, the MMT says in order to prevent inflation, you do what? You take money out of the system. How do you do that? Through taxes. My point to you is very simple. Either which way you decide to slice this and to analyze it so that you can digest it, the end result is the same. Taxes are going to go up. It's just a matter of when. We don't know when they're going to go up, but if you start getting this inflation, you've got to pull money out of the system. How do you do that? Raise interest rates? Not with these kind of deficits. What happens if you raise the interest rates? Wow. Now you've chewed up a half of the GDP just uh, just just to pay the, the national debt, that's not viable. So what are they doing? You're doing it, you're, you're raising taxes. You're not going to raise interest rates. That's going to keep the markets propped. That's going to do what? Make sure that everybody has to stay invested in equities. What are you going to do? Raise taxes, just simply pull money out of the system. This is exactly modern monetary theory at work. This is, this is where we are. So I'm just trying to get you to look not the emotional side of it, just at the reality of it all. All right, how do we prepare for this? How do we get doing? This is what I do at Asset Guidance Group. This is my love. This is my passion, okay? Fundamental planning so that we preserve our wealth that we have. The next step is that we've got to get superior growth on the risk, on the wealth that we can afford to risk, all right? And that's, that's all through our fundamental planning here. We, we slice and dice that. And then we do advanced planning for tax mitigation, and that's why we watch out for the future, because, baby, the future is here. It is on us. All right. Sorry it went a little bit long. It's a, com a complicated topic. It was information I think you need. Reach out to me. Become a client of us, just like our other clients. You're going to love doing business with us. And until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll try to make sure that you stay prosperous.